Adobe had just released a really big update for Lightroom Classic and now it supports native tethering for Sony cameras. This is a huge update for me because I have not been able to tether my Sony cameras natively into Lightroom. In the past, I've had to do some workarounds where I actually tether into the Imaging Edge app and then import them into Lightroom or set up a watch folder so Lightroom actually sweeps the folder and actually imports directly themselves, but through the folder, but then it's actually tethering from another software. So when you go down those chains, it's actually a really slow process before you actually see the image into Lightroom. In addition to that, I had some issues where when I had both softwares open, sometimes it will cause issues with the connection with my camera. And then it will just say to me, no camera detected. Then I turn off Lightroom, completely shut it down. And then now the Imaging Edge app suddenly works perfectly fine. So that's why sometimes my workflow had to be shoot into Imaging Edge app first and then move over into Lightroom. So now being able to natively go directly into Lightroom, that's a really big thing for me, especially since in the next two days, I've got quite a big shoot coming up. So let me just quickly get into it and show you what it's like. So you're gonna need a couple of things to get started. First off, here's the camera. Here I'm using the Sony a7 IV. Second, you need a tether cable. Here I'm using a five meter cable from Tether Tools. It's USB-C, as you can see, my one is a little bent. You gotta be careful with these things because a lot of the time I was doing a lot of flat lay photography and I was connected in through here. And then when it's hanging off, obviously there's weight bearing towards this side and it starts bending it down towards this side, which then obviously caused that bend there. So I would suggest that if you were going to use this cable is you can actually get these cable supports, which you attach here, which I haven't got attached to my camera at the moment. I do have them somewhere, but I just had to take them off because I wasn't shooting tethered at the time. You can also get some wire clamps where you attach it to the bottom and it holds it in place to prevent any wiggle. But nonetheless, it's just something to bear in mind. It's not a mandatory thing, but it's something I would advise you look into just in case, just in case you end up like that. But the cable does still work. I do actually have a spare cable sitting in my drawer just in case this one completely fails and that I need to just revert back to this one. But I'm going to ride this one till it dies. So first off, connecting to the USB-C port. Now when I turn on my camera, I get prompted with this screen here. Now if I just select remote PC shooting, and now my camera is ready to go. So now when we go to Lightroom, I've already kind of pre-made this catalog file. It's just a blank catalog at the moment. So if I go to File, Tethered Capture, Start Tethered Capture. The studio session for today, I'm just gonna name it Test Shoot because this is all it is, I'm just testing it out. This is the file naming structure. So it's very similar to the export settings when you just select how you want your file name structure to be. So here in the destination section, you just need to choose where you want your photos to land. So as you take the photos from your camera, they're gonna shuffle over through to the USB-C cable into the laptop and land into the folder you designate. I'm just going to put that generically into the desktop for now. And then from here, I'm just going to click OK. Now you get prompted with this. You see it recognizes my camera. You can see the settings here, which I can actually change. I can't change the aperture purely because I've got the aperture set here on my, on my camera. But if I was to put that all the way into A, I should now be able to control the aperture through the software. As you can see, clicking it on the actual Lightroom software and it's changing on the back of my camera. Likewise, I can change the exposure on the ISO and the shutter speed. The one thing that I can't really change at the moment is the focus area points. And that is something that I was using in the Imaging Edge app, which is not the biggest problem in the world, but it is something to bear in mind that I haven't actually been able to find how to change the focus on Lightroom. Not entirely sure if you can't do it or if I just haven't found it just yet, but you can actually change the most important features, which is just the actual exposure. And now from here, I could actually just press the shutter button through Lightroom and now it captures the image, and you'll see it transfer into Lightroom. Obviously, I'm just taking a picture generically of my messy desk, just ignore that. You can also put some presets here. These are the default presets that Lightroom have set. Usually I use Cinematic 2 CN11 as my preset. So now if I was to shoot this again, And there it is when it got imported with the standard preset and here is imported with the Cinema 11 preset that I typically use. Just to test the speed again, because here I am hitting the shutter button. And it just takes a couple seconds before the image is now imported into Lightroom. Now in this part, when I'm shooting, the rest of the team, usually like the art director or the producer of the shoot, they can now actually review the images as they're coming through. And any ones that they like, they can just quickly flag with a rating. So here, just hit five. And there you go. So then now I know 
throughout the shooting process. We can cull as we go along. So at the end of the day, when the shoot's all done, we can actually just filter down and have less to go through. And I have a better idea about what I'm going to be looking at when it comes to retouch. You can actually also get a view live of the actual live view itself. It's not set on by default, but I'll show you where to go for this. So as you can see on the screen here, if you click this live button, it will open up live view for you. And this is the live view through the camera. As I'm moving it, you see it moving around. And then you can just move this so it's out of the way for you as well. So one of the good things about this setup is also that I use a MacBook Pro. And with that, I can actually use Sidecar to actually connect to my iPads so then they can actually use the dual screen. So what this allows me to do, I can actually set up my iPads as an extended screen or mirror my screen, which then allows me to put the iPad either in the hands of a director, art producer or so forth, and they can help review the images then and there with me. Or I can have the iPad facing out towards a model and closer to them so then they can actually see how they're looking and how the images are coming out, which can either help them out, give them more confidence so they can feel better in front of the camera, or they can actually self-assess and see how their poses are coming out, which will also then help me out when it comes to me directing because they're also helping themselves. So here I have my iPad 10.9 inch 10th gen. So if I go into display settings, and I go to add display. Here, if I add to my iPad, it will just allow me to control the iPad but it'll still be working as an iPad, but I can actually use my mouse and keyboard through this. That's not what I wanna go for. I wanna to go to mirror or extend, and then I'll select my iPad. And then from here, it should kick over. And here is my display. As you can see, this is my Mac. And here you can see the cursor of the mouse moving as I'm moving the mouse. I can actually just mirror it completely. So that way, anything that is gonna be on my laptop is gonna be on here, which may be the situation I might go for, but let's just show you what I would do what I could otherwise do. And if I hit live, I can actually now move the live view display window over here. And then as you can see, I'm moving around. And that is also doing a live feed of that, which is obviously gonna be amazing because that way, again, if an art director is just looking on a seat to the side and as I'm shooting, they can actually get a clear view of what I'm seeing through the camera. So all in all, I've only had a quick play with this update at the moment. I actually have a big shoot this Thursday where I'll be fully testing this and actually fully immersing myself into this. And then I'll kind of follow up and let you know if there's any issues that I find. But for the meantime, through my testing, it seems to be working perfectly fine. There are a few times where the connection does drop out, but then it does quickly reconnect. And through my testing at the moment, I can't foresee any issues that may arise at the actual shoot day. But if I do find any issues, I'll follow up with another video and I'll let you know my findings. But until then, just a quick test of Sony's tethering natively into Adobe Lightroom Classic.